let's ra- you want to rapid fire some of the things we saw or didn't see today from uh, Niners OTAs. Here we go. Rapid fire things we didn't see. Debo Samuel not there, but Kyle Shanahan volunteered during the uh, post-practice press conference. I expect Debo to be here. He was asked, have you talked to him? And he said, I've learned not to tell anybody when I've talked to anybody. So I'm not going to say. But um, continues to give a positive energy off about the Debo situation. Gave very positive energy. We, we didn't go into details about Debo's Instagramming pictures of workout places, but not him actually working out, just a picture of the post-workout. Pretty genius move on his part. Uh, let's everyone know, hey, guys, I'm not mailing it in, but I don't actually see him working out. But smart. Mm. Kyle Kyle does not seem stressed about it at all. No. Um, Alex Mack, not there. Kyle Shanahan asked about it, said, uh, I've got a pretty good idea what he's doing. And then he added, and I think you guys do too, which I don't know what that means. I know what I think. I don't think he's coming back. But you t- I, I, I think he's going to come back. You think he's coming back? Training camp only. You know, remember Michael Strahan would just have to show up like the last year? Like, what does Alex Mack have to prove to Kyle? And who's the other thing is, guy, they don't really, I mean, they're working through all these random guys. Like, I think Kyle wants them back. They, they, oh, they definitely want him back. He, but he's on his second vacation right now. But like, wh- who cares? He's 37 years old. Yeah. I, I don't, you're right. I mean, the fact that he hasn't retired, my gut is he, it, my gut is he comes back. I think it's weird because I think he just would have retired. Like now, it's like the draft ended. Yeah. What, what, what are we waiting for? But then, why hasn't he said he's coming back? If he's because they wouldn't care if he was just waiting. I think it's weird. It's a little weird, but if the teammates know, who cares? But if they know he's coming back, what are we waiting? Why can't on? they just say it? Maybe he wants to announce it. I don't know. Maybe but who announces like a, they're coming back? This isn't maybe college it's basketball. G- gender reveal? I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, hey, it's I'm not disputing like, I'm that it's not. Yeah, it's, I'm not disputing that it's a little like, what's the point of all this if he does come back? But why wouldn't they just announce he's retired? Like, what's what's he? Does he want to sit down and retire? He's not going to retire as a niner, right? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It's, I I just think I don't. I think it's weird, and I don't think I definitely don't assume he's coming back. And my lean is that he's not. I don't assume he's coming back either. I. I I just, the way Kyle said it, for whatever reason, in my gut, I was like, yeah, I bet he just, they let him come back like August 15th. Um, McGlinchey and Kinlaw, we saw both of them. Uh, you asked Kyle Shanahan. Put the big, put the, put the, uh, John put the, the J in journalism. Uh, about, but I do think, what, I mean, those are two starting players. Like I yeah. just, he, he claims now, I, I would imagine if we watched, coaching press conferences all around the league, like when so-and-so starter on every team, you expect them, they'd all say camp. We feel good about him coming to training camp. And half those players that will be listed this week when head coaches talk will go on that three-letter three letter word called pup, right? Now, you would say just watching those two guys move around, they didn't look like one guy had a torn quad and the other guy had microfracture ACL. You notice neither of them walking weird, which I'd say is a positive, and that is... May 24th, June 24th. July. Both guys have two plus months before. Yeah. Well, I mean, really two and a half months, probably. It's true. Neither, none of them were walking weird. That's Do you bad. think it'd be weird if either one went on pup? Um, I mean, Kinlaw got a surgery in fucking like October, so. Do I think it'd be weird? Weird would be strong. I mean, do you? I, I do think he was telling the truth. Like he, they expect him. They, they feel good about those two guys. Yeah, I think you'd be a little alarmed, just given that you need them. The you know, like it's a big year for. First of all, they really need McGlinchey. Like if somehow McGlinchey's not available, right? And then uh, let's say Alex Mack isn't back. And yeah, then you got you got, so they got problems. Parts. Yeah, can Trent Williams play multiple positions at one time? Probably could block multiple people at one time if you, you really move him. Move him to center. You think? But he, um, he just has steps both ways. How about you just move him to left? He follows the best pass rusher on the other team. You know when like Khalil Mack goes the other side, he gets up and falls. Yeah, yeah. You you shift. Just the. What do you do against the Chargers? Uh, you put him against Joey. And then have your other guy with Kittle. Use check. Just triple team Khalil with Kittle and use check. Well, I you just I mean you're not gonna. I I you agree you Joey is your priority. 
Uh, yeah. I mean, if Khalil's healthy, they're just they'd be tough. Khalil, Khalil and Farrell. Farrell. That game is week ten, so hopefully McGlinch will be back by then. Um, Brandon Ayuk, we mentioned him earlier, but I mean, especially without Debo there, is I I'd say looks like the one A guy. Um, you know, I think one of the reasons the stuff with him last year was a little interesting was because I remember thinking last year in OTAs, Brandon Ayuk has a very professional air about him when it comes to practice. I think it, he's a he's a very maybe that comes from her, maybe that's just him who he is. I think he's a pretty professional practicer. So I, that's I not new today, but that's how I would describe it. I would say the two receivers. I mean, I think, and it might just be his emergence last year. Like, Jawan Jennings looks like an NFL player, right? I mean, before it's like, what's up with this guy? Is he going to make the team? You know, is, is he going to be fighting for playing time? Like, when I see Jawan Jennings, now I go, that's a, that's a starter. Now it's some, you know, the Niners, because they run the ball so much, have a lot of two wide receiver sets. They're not exactly spreading it out. But when they go three wide receivers, like, he's a starter on a playoff team. And I feel good about that player. I mean, think about a third down. Like, they're going to be in some third and fours, some third and sixes. Some, you know, it feels he like was, he'll be a, a guy target. Trey Lance should throw it to. He's got a big target. Yeah, that's a good call. Mr. Corey on the stream says, they really need McGlinchey. Laffy emoji, laffy emoji, laffy emoji, laffy emoji, face to palm emoji. Brunskill was better than him at right tackle in 2019. Uh, well, again, Brunskill was out, is out right now with knee tendonitis. So they have no starting offensive lineman at OTAs active. No returning starters. If I remember correctly to Brunskill, or excuse me, McGlinchey, remember Staley broke his leg in the middle of the season, and McGlinchey, I think, tore his MCL. So he did, like, miss games in the season with an injury and then came back. I'm not defending. Like, I, it's not like I think he's some star player. But, like, I'm going to have a, just a blank slate and judge him based on if he's fully healthy this season. Is the guy good enough to be a starting right tackle for the next five years? Yeah, because it's contract time. Yeah. Right. Is, is that, I'm sorry. You you were talking about. I was talking about McGlinchey. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Eric Branch, the San Francisco Chronicle, asked Kyle Shanahan, "Well, Fred Warner, George Kittle, just checking. Are they hurt?" And Kyle said, "Uh, they're just both dealing with a minor thing. It's not even a big enough deal for me to really look into it. Lower body. Um. So because we we're, we're watching practice going well, I guess Fred Warner didn't show. I guess Kittle's not around. And then somebody said, "No, Kittle's here. He's around here somewhere. He's going to talk." Um, but, uh, and, and maybe by the time this is out, he did talk and told people whatever ingrown toenail or something. Because I, I, I do think when I went to practice today, I didn't expect to see Debo. Of course we knew, I mean, they've already, they already had kind of talked about how Trent does gets to do his own thing and Bosa trains and they feel good about it with his, you know, I guess his brothers in, in San Diego or LA, but trains there. Okay. I expected to see Kittle and 54 so to me it makes more sense like when i think george kittle i think a guy that likes practicing like jimmy ward like jimmy ward you can tell like looks forward to this to me george kittle looks forward to this and i mid practice i thought like this is kind of weird there's a lot of guys kind of tapping out even you said like listen it's otas it's going the other way just in the league but i thought fred and that they're inside and use check same type deal use check at the family thing was there yesterday like when i think those guys I think even them, they kind of eat it for the team. And I, I made more sense when Kyle said that, right? Yeah. Made a lot more sense. Like, to me, George Kittle ain't like, if they're practicing, he's going to be on the practice field. Like, they're, like, legitimately playing football. Right. Because I would say he's been their best practice player. Best would be strong. I mean, I would imagine they have a lot of good practice. But just because of his position, how fast he is, he just really – you've been going to practice for years. He 85 really stands out when you go to 49 practice. You go – that's one of their better players. Uh, and it was that way, even going back to his rookie year, I think, right? Yeah, I think when, he... When you can run that fast and catch the fucking ball. Uh, Garoppolo, I mentioned that earlier uh, in the stream, in the podcast. It, Kyle just said, I expect him to be traded, but also said there's no guarantee, so blah, blah. But to me, when, you, when you're talking about a guy on your team, I expect him to be traded, even if you say, I don't know what's going to happen. When you start talking about a player like that, I think it's hard to also think of that player as potentially your starting quarterback. So, yeah, you know, I think it's clear where this is going. Brock Purdy. People wanted us to watch Brock Purdy. We talked about him the other day. We watched him a little bit today, um, you know, in some drills. Uh, I would say it looks like some of the other guys that they've had before. I mean, one thing is clear with him. His kind of savvy and understanding of what's happening in front of him is what carries him. 
Feels a little shorter than even the previous couple guys, doesn't he? Yeah, I mean, he's wearing 14, so he kind of looks like McGloin. He's standing next to Sudfeld and Trey Lance also, which, you know, what what is he listed at? My guess is he's 6'1". I bet he's in the 6'00 something under the 1. Yeah, he's listed at 6'1", so he may be the 6'00". And Sudfeld, I think, is legit like 6'5", 6'6". Like, he's one of the taller guys. So you're right. Um. But he, you know, he's, to he's, he's to me, he's smaller than Mullins and CJ. Well, def, I would say definitely CJ. It feels like in college. I don't know now, if he's smaller than Nick. Yeah, you're right. Nick was pretty small. I didn't watch Nick in college. Watch, you know, just Iowa football. It feels like Brock Purdy was a better player in college. Maybe not a better prospect because CJ was bigger than C.J. Beathard was in college. Now, maybe Kyle would disagree. I, I, was, I don't think there's any question about that, at least from a productivity standpoint. Just from, like, if you need a guy to play on different your offenses, college team. Different offenses, in fairness. True, but, but I think that I think if you just ask the average coach in college, or even in the Big Ten, right? That I guess the Iowa State's in the Big 12. But it, it feels like Brock Purdy's a better college player. Now, that doesn't just because you're a better college player doesn't mean you're a better NFL player. But I think we saw pretty quickly, like, so she, should C.J. Beathard have been drafted in the third round under no circumstances, right? C.J. Beathard probably yeah. is a seventh-round pick. Yep. So is Nick Mullins, and so is, it just shows you. Like, you just get in the mix, which he's got drafted. It would not shock me if he's able to win. You know, Sudfeld's got a big arm, but he can't move. You know, Brock's I, – I just I, – I'm not going to be shocked if Kyle really likes the guy. I think the the question is how where is Brock? Brock's going to have to prove it in in a game, right? The things that are going to separate him are going to have to happen in a game. Whereas Sudfeld walks out and it's just whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. So he's going to get a lot of preseason action. I bet. Yeah, so that's what I'm getting at. So Trey Lance, how much is he going to play in the preseason? It's I would imagine he'll get treated like a starting quarterback gets treated, right? Which is a couple series which is actually where last year's experience becomes really valuable. Cause if he hadn't had any experience last year, we'd start talking about, well, you know, does he need game speed, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Um, so that's, I think the preseason, the games are going to be where Brock Purdy really can make an impression on Shanahan. One big picture thing though, about Trey being our starting quarterback. And this is part of it. Like, I mean, last year, Trey was a backup, which, you, how many teams in the league would have taken Trey Lance their backup? Like they are going to go into a season with Sudfeld as their backup and Brock Purdy on the practice squad. Like yeah. that's you're a, you're a sprained ankle away from missing a month. To like holy shit, hold on for your ass, right? W- would have loved to have um Tyrod Foles. Taylor, yeah, or Foles Foles type or Brissett. Even I mean Brissett's not athletic, but either really is Foles. Um, doesn't really matter. Oh, uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick, just a legitimate guy that you That's know you can win good. With. Yeah, he's the high end. You know, but Ch- Chad Henney, the, the Chiefs have won a game with Chad Henney. Yeah. Yeah. You Remember, know, I, Tannehill, I, Tannehill became Mario's backup for a year. Like the, the Niners are in a position where if their Mariota. backup had to start three or four, Mariota, th- their backup has to start three or four games. I, I would say the Niners would be in major trouble. I don't care where, where in the schedule they're at. I agree. Or, yeah, and yes. And you know what? Yes. Now, obviously, if a guy has a major injury or starting quarterback, any team in the league screwed. But we've seen time and time again, like, guy could miss a game or two, and the Niners would be no lock to win a game with old Nate. 